Hello guys, welcome to a very special episode of Table Talk, the show where we take your topics on Twitter using the hashtag Table Talk. You know how it works. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm Joe Beretta. And we have a very special guest here, Richard Madden, a.k.a. Rob Stark, a.k.a. the new guy in Klondike. What's your character name in that show? Bill Haskell. Bill Haskell. Haskell. Uh, and this is all about Klondike and Game of Thrones and everything we love you for. We just love you, dude. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah. Welcome to the show. We'll ask I'm happy to be here. Awesome. What's that? What's I said we'll ask him for hugs later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or right now. Here, I'm going to hug you just awkwardly. Son of a bitch! Yeah! <laughs> Son of a bitch! We did a Rochambeau to sit next to you, who was gonna sit here, yep. and I won, so. Okay, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> good. Also, so we're gonna jump right in, and so we actually asked you guys beforehand to send us some cool uh, Richard Madden, Game of Thrones, Klondike-themed stuff. So, uh, there's some thrown in there. Lord knows what we're gonna pull oh, out no. of this thing. Let's, let's get crazy. Let's get crazy. Let's go off the cuff. Who's that? So what's that song that's like... Uh oh, let's go. Nobody's gonna do it. It's like good. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Here we go. So test subject ten ninety says, if you had the power to remove one commonly used item from society, what would it be? Oh man, that is so weird. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go dangerous zone here. I'm gonna go with something that everybody thinks they need, and even I do. But I feel so good when it's done. I know you where know you're going. Gonna say I know where you're going because I was gonna say the same. Goodbye, thing. cell phones. No. Goodbye. Get rid of them. I love the connection. I get it for the professional world and the personal world and whatever. But when you're sitting there having a conversation with somebody and they pull out the phone, you you can't connect with people anymore. That's a, that's my that's my answer. But that's you right. also can't phone for help in an emergency. There you yeah. go. Yeah. See. But I'm never in danger because I am the danger. <laughs> <laughs> How would you ask for help in the Klondike universe? Like if you you, 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 you don't. Help. There was no law. There was no ambulance. There was no help. You just died of horrible disease. <laughs> Or being covered by an avalanche. Yeah, yeah. The or disease of like, bullet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking, like, because uh, we were watching Klondike, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about how, like, um, you, like if you guys, because you're out there, like, on boats and stuff with, like, the little tent covering your, like, boat, and you're, like, freezing, and yeah. you just want a hot bath and stuff. Like, if you got pneumonia or even, like, a bad flu, you're done. You're dead. You're yeah. dead. It's yeah. all life and death. <laughs> it's right there. crazy. You got, like, a small itch on your shoulder. Like, scratch it before I die. <laughs> <laughs> and then you think about kids now. Yeah. Like, we're so spoiled, and we're so, like... My ankle hurts, Mom. I'm not going to school today. And it's like, dude, if your ankle hurt in the Klondike times, or even in like medieval Game of Thrones like times, you. you... Or in Scotland in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like, man? It was tough. It was really tough in Scotland in the nineties. Okay, so I'm talking about Americans being spoiled. Tell oh us no. Yeah. We no. suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're so spoiled. I hate it. You are. You're really spoiled. In, in Scotland in the nineties, when I grew up, any time I had any pain, I was just um, it was just growing pains. That's what my mother <sighs> told me. I'm Until, coughing up blood while well, you're 13. <laughs> or no, you're grown up. <laughs> actually, actually, once I did, um, I shot myself through the hand with a really high-powered pellet gun, and my, my mother didn't believe me. <laughs> I ran into the house, and I was holding my hand up like this, and the blood's running down. I said, Mom, Mom, I've shot myself, I've shot myself. And she's washing dishes, she's like, Richard, I am not in the mood for this. Do it. And she turned around, and on the blood, she's like, we're going to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. See, but they always say moms have eyes in the back of their heads. They don't. That's Not a lie. in that instance. I no think we're way. missing the important part of the story. How did you shoot yourself in the head? Yeah, let's get that out of there. That damned safety kept getting in my way. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've heard that before. <laughs> it, won't, it won't work. Every John. time I went to shoot, the safety was there. So I took it off as I was loading it. That's oh, mistake so, number one. Oh, no. And, uh, and shot myself through the hand. Oh, okay. man. Clean through? Just Yeah, clean through. Great. It's in this one here. The same thing. Oh, is that the scar right there? No, that was with the sushi knife. See how they parallel scars? Look there? at you, man. Yeah. Look, these are baby hands. There's no scars. They're so no smooth. And calluses. this one, I also totally mutilated it under a, um, a skateboard that I'd nailed a massive piece of wood to and put my hands underneath, went down a hill, and titted, and it just. Oh, no. And it's all on my wedding finger, so I think it's an omen. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away. Yeah, no, don't. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, so, I don't know. I feel like. Um, cell phones, I guess, is your big thing to take away, but I don't know. I, I need my cell phone, man. I totally need it. Like, I'm not saying I'm not dependent on it. I'm annoyed by it. Constantly. I know, and you got those yeah. friends that are always like, "Dude, at the dinner table, like, put your damn phone." Well, it's no, it's that kind of moment that everyone's had their dinner and they've been polite, and slowly one person pulls their phone out, <laughs> and then everyone's got their phone out, and, yeah. Yeah. and you're going, "Oh, that's what we're doing for just now." Yeah. It's not like smoking at the end of a meal. It's everyone's like, has their five minutes. Would you for guys their phone. like some dessert and coffee? Uh, no, 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 thank, thank you. you. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, they have these like events or parties or whatever where, um, and I'm on, I'm only told of these. They could be not true. But like you go to someone's house for a party or whatever, and there's like a big bowl where you put your phone in it, and it's like put your damn phone away and have some social interaction. Don't look at your damn phone. And then do you like take someone else's phone? <laughs> <laughs> and then you like, go. Yeah. And then and then uh, what is the game where you like put your keys in? And yeah, but a cell phone. Everybody just, that's the game. You go to a restaurant, you eat food, put your cell phones in there, knowing that everybody has sex on the table. Right, well then what you do is, is you wait for wait, someone. Wait, restaurant? <laughs> no, let's go. I did it no, at no, a McDonald's. In fact, I'm sorry, Let me mom. book a reservation really quick. <laughs> uh, what, what about you? What's one like commonly used thing that you could see the world getting getting rid of? Getting rid of. Commonly used thing the world will get rid of. I don't know. That's a weird question. Mm -hmm. It is. I know so it was from someone called Test Subject. I'm not sure I, want to <laughs> I know, maybe they're trying to learn things about us to like <laughs> yeah. keep our DNA down or something. I, how about this? Let's take guns out of the equation. That's Boom. good. Oh. Boom. We just if got that happened little. when I was a kid. <laughs> then you would have never shot through your be hand. In this situation, yeah. no. <laughs> I love it. Let's do the next one. All right, go ahead. Who wants to pick a topic? Oh, right, okay. Oh, Richard's oh, picking a topic. Don't be from a test subject. <laughs> um, all right. This is from Stylish and Beautiful. Ooh. Beautiful. Uh, nice. If you could have been a prodigy in anything as a child, such as drawing, music, or sports, etc., what would you choose? Mm. Mm, a prodigy. Well, I always wanted to learn how to play the piano. I think we talked about this before. Mm. And I feel like when you're a kid... You like that's the perfect age to learn how to do something. Yeah. Your brain's developing, yeah. Yeah. even other languages and stuff. I would say languages. That's what I wish that when yeah. I was a kid, because you can just soak up that information so quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish I'd been taught all that, but. Because with language comes culture, and you, you you learn about a people as you learn about their language. That's a good answer. Just like every language. Yeah, yeah you could do yeah. it every language. Plus, it's yeah. easier to talk shit about somebody when like the other person <laughs> speaks the language and someone else doesn't. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, this guy over here. Full of Mokoropo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like my mom and dad, so I'm Hispanic, they would speak Spanish to each other only when they were going to talk shit about us or like, say something <laughs> personal or something. And my brother learned Spanish like that because of it, and I was like, like I never like it you never, never went it into up. my brain. I never picked it up. You didn't and want to hear the truth. I didn't want to hear the truth. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. They never went out of their way to teach you, so they could constantly <laughs> talk shit. Behind. They learned with your older brother. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, it's perfect. You should learn another language with Heather. And then, Wait, uh, with Hayden. With Heather, and then talk oh, about yeah. Hayden. Yeah, I'll just make up a language, and I'll just look at Hayden with a Hayden's my daughter. I'll just look at her with just a mean eye, like <laughs> That sounds like. Uh, and then she'll cry. And I'll Targaryen. Talk. Oh, or something. Yeah. Um, I think so. We always go to like music and sports, and we've heard the language one too, or not sports, but language and music. Because I'm, I'm in the same boat. Piano, guitar. If I learned that at a young age, I would have been just stoked. But but let's bring up the topic of sports. Like I know you're not too big of into. Are you into sports? No, not at all. Yes, no, <laughs> dude. I have no interest. In we just became best friends. But now I'm gonna I don't ask, like sports at all because you guys don't like sports. If you had to be a prodigy in a sport, then you end up being a professional in or whatever. What, do you, what would you guys choose? Formula One car race. That's Ooh. a good answer. That's fun. That's some dangerous stuff, dude. But fun. I mean, I feel like you're kind of a thrill seeker. Like, you're shooting yourself in the hand with a gun. That's just what I meant. While well, jumping out like of the plane. Like, the skateboard yeah. thing, dude. Like, I never, like, I wouldn't even cross the street, ever. Like, I think <laughs> you I never crossed the street. The first time I ever crossed the street was this right? morning. This is where Steve was born. <laughs> I never left this house. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, but no, I mean, I don't know. I was very coddled and sheltered, so I was very afraid of things. I never climbed a tree, but also because I was, like, the fat kid. So I was like, I couldn't get up the damn tree even I if I wanted to. Cheese. Really? Yeah. It must be like a Scottish thing then, because like Americans, I don't know, it's a different thing. Fat but... Americans can't climb trees? No, how many people do uh, it today? Are you hearing the stuff that's coming out of his mouth? <laughs> it's all him, I didn't say it. Uh, yeah, you seem like a thrill seeker, like racing is crazy, man. Yeah, racing would be good, that would be really good to do. Have you done the bungee jumping and the skydiving and all that stuff? I yeah. have no, no, the, bun, the, the bungee jumping thing freaks me out because I read this article that when you bungee jump, when you get to the bottom, like and you do you know you get the snap yeah. that your brain separates from the bottom of your skull for a second and then comes slaps back and that mm. weirds me out. Dude, is that yeah. true? Yeah, apparently. So you know what the what problem is? Is, oh, is that you man. read something? I read. <laughs> reading I know. is bad. I know. <laughs> it's, it's like WebMD. Like, what's that thing where you can like? Oh man, I have this pain in my thumb. Oh, don't Let do me that. check out WebMD. I have cancer. Let me go. <laughs> let me go to Internet Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. God. All right. Let's move it on. All right. From That's Jack terrifying. Lindvall. From the at Jack Lindvall on the Twitters. Uh, asks, did you get to take any cool prop 
from the set of Game of Thrones? I'll answer this. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I really wanted to, um, and I could have done. I could have taken my sword. But I just had no way to get it through the airport security. Oh no! So, <laughs> dude, you're Rob Stark, man. You could have just walked around with it, and they would be like, right. "Dude, this is cool." <laughs> They'd be like, "Dude, you're not getting on this flight." Um, I don't so care who you are. I, I took what was kind of manageable, which were um, all the little map pieces, the little figurines. Oh, that's map, cool. Little direwolf and the little Lannister. That's lion awesome. Yes, yeah, so they're quite oh. cool. Those prop guys are amazing Beyond. on that show. Like, Beyond. do they do the intricate like chainmail stuff and all that kind of stuff? Like, oh, they make like everything? you should see. Like when I first started, like there was a massive warehouse with like dozens and dozens of people. Um, and they had these massive vats, and they were just dyeing leather for days. It's it was crazy. medieval. They were doing it medieval methods. Wow. wow. And like yeah. blacksmiths like hitting things. Yeah, like blacksmiths that. like making armor and shit. Yeah. Just like on the set. We need a new sword. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> ding, ding. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I was talking to Steve about this before. Like Lord of the Rings was notorious for. Uh, just the amazing production value and stuff. Mm. And I've said from the start, from what I could tell, Game of Thrones was on par, if not better, oh, yeah. as far as like the look and uh, how intricate you guys, and specific you guys got with everything. Yeah, it? totally. I mean, we'd be on set and there's things that you can't even, like the food we'd have at a feast, for example, is proper medieval recipes, all edible, really cool stuff like that. Or like, and you know, if you see incense burning in a place, like different parts of the kingdom, there's different incense burning. It's, it's really, Intricate detail. There was one thing I probably shouldn't say this, but now that I'm dead, I can. Uh, <laughs> uh, if if you watch Game of Thrones, um, do look because there is only one type of candle in all of the Seven Kingdoms. There is just one guy that makes candles. No way. If you look, no matter if you're on Dothraki's or they just there's the same candles everywhere. That's wow. nuts. A little fact. For so you. that guy's like the Bill Gates of candles. He <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like he's gotta like do something mystical with the candles. Double wick. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh wait. Well, there you go. Double wick. Is it really He's a double like, wick? Double wick. Wow. Really He's well like, I'm gonna try it. something different. That no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, he could put like some kind of spell in his candles, and since all the kingdoms use them, he can get like intel in all the kingdoms using magic or some shit. You should have talked to George R. R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you have to tell us a little bit about George R. R. Martin. Is he awesome? Yeah, he's a cool guy. <sighs> he's a cool guy. His brain is, is wonderful. I mean, look how he's created. I he's know. Really cool. And, you know, I, I kind of just tried to wrestle, like, things out of him. Spoilers and stuff. Don't tell me. <laughs> of course I not. just have, like, this vision of him sitting on the set, and every time one of his characters dies, he just goes... With the candles. <laughs> with the candles. The, the white guy, the yeah. candle guys in the back. Like, yeah. <laughs> now, I heard a crazy rumor about Klondike that you actually, you were put through the ringer more on Klondike Absolutely. than Game of Thrones. Absolutely. That's crazy. Game, Game of Thrones seems a breeze now compared to what I did yeah. in Klondike. Yeah. I definitely nearly died a few times in Klondike, and that did not happen in the films. Oh my god, so no stunt doubles for you in no, Klondike? No, I, I had stunt doubles, but they furiously just didn't ever get to do anything. Because I did all. So there's these guys with this like massive curly wig on, like, going, this is shit, I'm not going to do my job. I'm stuck in Canada. <laughs> Wait, but was that you insisting to do it? or was that I want, like... Yeah, I know, I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it a lot um, for the real reason of, I, I hate watching shows where it's like, yeah, and then the guy is about to, and it like flicks to the back of the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cut. Yeah. And then like totally different body language of yeah, someone yeah. and he's massive with like really long hair. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work. So I wanted to make sure that like there was nothing that stopped the audience from believing what was going on. Nothing that kind of brought them out of watching the show and into like, oh, I'm, I'm watching the drama. I wanted mm. people to be involved. And my director wanted to make sure that we get those shots. So when I'm kind of getting thrown into a river rapids or, um, you know, I'm on fire or something like that. It was me doing it. That's really so, cool. And those rapids, like, especially in the first episode I was watching, like, you just feel cold the whole episode when you're watching it. And I'm in the warmth of my home watching it. Southern California. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I feel, like, so freezing watching it. Like, what, like, is it just absolutely freezing? Like, when you fell into oh that God, river. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was a huge, that was a Canadian river, right? Yeah, that was, like, that was up in the, yeah, it was up in Calgary, outside Calgary and, that was all mountain runoff, so that was like oh Category God. Four River Rapids, so crazily cold. And you know, we shot this, you know, that sequence over a couple of days, and I, you know, I threw myself into the rapids, and I convinced myself that I was in a studio, and they could just turn them off. And <laughs> sure. really dangerous, which, it's it, not which real. it wasn't. It's not real. It, you know, it was actually River Rapids that were really dangerous. Lots of safety people around, but it's you know, it's nature, so you actually don't know. And then. Um, 
you know, it, it, you, you had to say the bit where I'm coming out of the water, and then we cut, and I have to go back in, and then you redo it, and you redo it until I got to the, the kind of the last take of it, and and um, and you know, I was saying, oh, I, I can do another one, I'm fine to go for another one, but actually, it was just like it was this. It was hypothermia sitting and oh, the nurse no. had to say we must stop now because he's lost the power of speech and he's oh, like shaking. <laughs> You're just drooling on yeah. yourself. One I, I, more! I, I thought I was speaking comprehensively, but actually I was just wow. like, you couldn't make out what I was saying. Was That's it partially so you wanting to just get it over with and more so than just like, I can do it? Like, no, I, I, that doesn't come into it. It's just I wanted to tell the story as honestly mm. as I could and I wanted it. I wanted, you know, this was that was an intense part of the story, and you know, that was part of, you know, what actually happened to this character because it's based on a real character, and I wanted to just get it right. And you know, the only thing is like when it actually happens to a character, it only happens to them once, whereas you did like <laughs> fifteen <laughs> times. <laughs> so you could say you did a little bit more than the main guy, maybe. Yeah, maybe yeah. you're tougher. You're strong. You're better. I wouldn't say that. Uh, wouldn't the say next that. movie that's going to be made or te- television series is going to be about you making this one, <laughs> <laughs> and that actor's going to have to go into the water seventy times. <laughs> and yes. you're directing and you're just yelling out, <laughs> Good more time! <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Matt Dzidzik, uh, okay. I can't even pronounce it, uh, says, What is your favorite medieval weapon? Wow, aren't there, what about like the, the is the Iron Maiden something that's actually real? And I don't know if it's a weapon so much as like a torture, a torture device. device. Oh, real what quick, I know what you guys are all going to do. There's going to be like seven people that are, we're going to answer it with our hearts. We're going to th- you're going to use our hearts in our brain and we're going to be very specific and genuine with our answers. There's going to be some assholes that are going to go, that isn't really technically <laughs> <laughs> I'm never unsubscribed. I hope one of them is George R. 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 <laughs> he, like, he, he burns us all and he presses, he presses enter and then just goes. <laughs> <laughs> candles, candles. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Iron Maiden is that thing that's like it opens up and it has like spikes in it, and, and it you stick them in there you. and it closes on you. Yeah. Was that to just kill you? Or? I would imagine I so. Think it, yeah. Well, I feel like maybe some of the needles were like well placed enough to not fully go into you, so it was like kind of like torture more than anything. Have you thought about this? Oh, yeah. yeah you, I mean, <laughs> very specific. Look, when you become my age and you're married, you look for other thrills in the bedroom, and you know, sometimes <laughs> this is your house. Is it in one of the it's closets? True. Well, I'll show you after we film. Uh, <laughs> it's got horrible images in my head now. Those are just old dodos, not spikes. <laughs> Someone is enjoying that right now in the world. <laughs> that's, that's the scariest thing to think. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, uh, my favorite as a kid, even to now, and I know it's probably incredibly ineffective and, and a bitch to use, is the mace. As a kid, I always liked the big guy that had so the freaking the ball on the yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I just thought it was cool, but it's gotta be, it's gotta be not good in a fight, right? Well, because it gets stuck in, and then you yeah. have to pull it. Yeah, first you gotta like, get it going. <laughs> As you're getting it going, some guy with a sword just like, what the fuck? He just pokes you. <laughs> yeah. You're done, dude. Yeah. Uh, you're right, and plus like the distance on that thing, it's more of like a of a melee thing than like mm. a distance. Thing. I thought crossbows were cool too. But did they have mm. flaming crossbows? Because that would be my winner. That's a good. That's one. great. That's like the machine gun of the medieval weapon world. Because yeah. it's like, crossbow. yeah, wow, I like that. Just, just, Anytime you can add fire to a weapon, it's like super sizing super. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was that dragon stuff in Game of it was like dragon breath or something. They throw it and it was like fire almost. Like it burns. With the wildfire that yeah, just burns, wild and burns, and burns, yeah. and burns and burns and burns and yeah. burns. But I mean, that's not really a medieval weapon. That's like a cool George R. R. Martin. Yeah, because it's not thing. real. It's not, I wish it was. Though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> was real. Where is it? Where's Westeros? Tell me. Uh, I don't know. You gotta say like sword. I hate to be boring. The sword's but it's like, cool. Your sword is like the quintessential medieval weapon. But you know, like. In episode one of Game of Thrones, and Sean Bean has that massive sword to hit that guy at the start. He, Sean Bean, was the only guy on set that could lift it over his head. Oh my god! And you're actually filming it. You you don't see it, but he had to. He had it here, and he had to like, he had to lean back and jump to like swing it over. It was that intensely heavy. So like, unless you're really fit, sword would be really impractical. Yeah, Yeah, I guess you're right. Most people don't think about that. How they are just like it's that's pure steel. It was like and massive and heavy and really impractical. And then you think about how like those are meant to behead someone, and you're damn right when that thing comes down, it's gonna go clean through someone's head. Hopefully, otherwise it's one of those. Ah, son of a, (laughs) just a flesh wound. (laughs) Let's bring the mace in now. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've got the dildo Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> dildo Iron Maiden, a, a backup. <laughs> that one's just a tickle. Yep. You want to do the honors and pick one more? Okay, okay. we got you. All right. Awesome. 
Here we go. He's gonna go back up to living in the clouds after this. We'll never see him again. That's just from this is from Leroy. Okay. If you could hook up with anyone from Game of Thrones, who would it be? Character, not actor. Oh, okay. mm, so like in the universe, in the Westeros world. What so character? not shadow demon vagina chick. <laughs> <laughs> For damn sure. That's her technical character. That's her character name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vagina chick. <laughs> yeah. Stay cool. away from her. I kinda... But you get a spirit baby. Which that, is quite that's cool. true. Nobody and wants you the can baby. S- and it happens like really quickly. Do you know what I mean? Well, but I'm it's not t- nine months. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You don't have to go. That's all even the- more frightening. Can yeah. you imagine? I made a mistake, Dad. Here it is. <laughs> no, but you don't have to worry about all the like the barfing and the like. Oh, I can't get up today, honey. I'm no. pregnant. You know, it's like you don't get it's to quite- bitch about being pregnant when no, you're. No, you just got like and a, then a, a demon. Demon baby kills your greatest enemy. Huh. But you know what I was Does thinking? Does he evaporate after? Is the demon baby gone after that? Is I did wonder, but we never. Does he go off and find a job in like finance? Yeah, maybe he does. He's the candle maker. <laughs> He's the fucking candle maker. <laughs> I'd like to think though that you could, because like if you could make that little demon uh, ghost thing go and kill someone, can you also make it like go to the market to bring you food and bread and stuff? <laughs> that would, like, maybe because maybe I don't want to kill anybody. I'm kind of a pacifist. I don't well, want anybody kinda, to die. You just had servants to go and do that, didn't you? That's true. That's a good point. But I mean, what if you were like kind of poor and you had a red witch wife or something? Then you could be like practical. Like yeah. she was just out on the town that well, night and wanted to do something stupid, so she slept with a vagrant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. If, or fell in love. It happens all the time, Joe. If I was poor and had a demon baby, I wouldn't send him to go to the market for food. I'd send him <laughs> to go and like rob the bank. There you go. Something yeah, something a little more evil. You don't want to scare the old ladies at the market with like a they demon guy with a basket filling up <laughs> cereal and stuff. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> are you gonna get that one? Do you have any organic bananas? <laughs> <laughs> Where are your avocados? <laughs> <laughs> These persimmons are ripe. Oh. I like, that's ridiculous. I like. Okay, so keeping with the question really quick, I kind of like Marjorie Tyrell. I think she's great. She's. I. She has like a good heart. She seems really nice, and mm. I feel like I haven't seen any evil in her yet. I know you like to think that maybe she has some evil. We don't know yet. Or something could like be, that. She could get all evil. You can't like trust her. anybody in no that one, damn show. No yeah. one in that damn show. I know, right? Everyone's a thief or a liar or something, unless you're a Stark. If the Starks good, have honor. If you're a good guy, you're dead. So yep. It's so a sad. Guy, a I hate it. But it's like, that's kind of like life in a way, which makes me so sad. <laughs> Thanks, George R. R. Martin. <laughs> Thank you, George R. R. Martin, wherever you are. Uh, what about you? Uh, well, again, since we can't trust anybody, I'm just going to go off. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go with one of those damn dragons. Remember love with <laughs> yeah, dragon you want to make, make love that dragon. <laughs> Wait, but was it fall in love with or like be with? I think it's hook up with. Hook up with, yeah. Yeah, all I'd right. Be like, they can call me the dragon boy. That's a cool nickname. Why not? Would you fly Or around? fire dick. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> they called you that in high school anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, DJ, I'm sorry. Now we gotta get the out. answer straight from the source, the character. Mm-hmm. Um, why did none of you say Rob Stark? Oh, <laughs> well. Look, I'm, I'll, I need somebody that's gonna be around for my whole life. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, also, I'm not in a necrophilia. Okay, so all right, okay. Um, I'd have to go, I'd have to go with Delisa because, you know, that was my actual wife. Aww. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah, probably she, the best answer. She's the only one that didn't have horrible, horrible motives. For yeah, she was She was probably one of the only good people. Yeah. And might I say, quite the looker. Yeah, very attractive, Yes, if we can say so. You can say so. <laughs> I'm sure Even though she's... I know, it's like weird. I feel like, is it his real wife? It's like, <laughs> I don't want to offend him or anything. How, like, how, yeah, how, how, how complimentary can we get at Well, this how point? can you say your wife is hot to someone? Like, how am I understanding? Understand? Should I say I had fantasies she's about her? I don't know. Ooh, you don't want to go that far. But the dragon was there, so it's not just her. Okay, well, I get that. I mean, as long as you slip it under a little bit, it's fine. Well, it's okay. Yeah. She's yeah. very attractive. It's <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, so Klondike. Let's talk just a yeah, really real quick, quick bit Klondike. about Klondike. So the show is coming out Monday. It's a really great story. It's based on, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of truth. It's based on proper history of the gold rush in the 1890s. And the characters are, a lot of them are real characters, characters that existed at this time. And it's a really brilliant drama. It teaches you a lot just about human beings and human nature and what people do in these extreme situations where there's no law and there's no medicine and people are 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 trying to stay alive any ways possible. Yeah, and it's kind of terrifying because I was watching the first episode and I feel like 
there's all of these people that just and like you said there's no law there's no rules or anything like that it kind of has this game of thrones feel to it in the sense that like you're out in the open world and anything can happen and all these people are just trying to make a way in life and trying to like succeed in mm-hmm. some way and people are willing to do whatever it power takes. money greed yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's really a character study on real life but what's kind of more fascinating i think is that you know, and what I found, like, researching it and studying it and, and reading a lot of different stories about it and what the script shows is that you expect people to be more Game of Thrones, I suppose, in the terms of, you know, when 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 things get difficult and uh, when shit gets real, people get vicious and turn animal and everyone's out for themselves. And actually what's so surprising about in Game of Thrones, that's what happens. Yeah. In this, this is is much more real in terms of what human beings do and, and what I noticed from all the research I did and what this show proves is that actually human nature and kindness and generosity, the good bits of human beings, come through rather than that vicious animal quality. It does, I mean, I'm not going to lie, there's plenty of uh, blood and sex and violence, which we all love in the show. Mm. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot about the about human nature that's kind of really interesting. I like That's that. Really cool. I like that. It's a story that needs to be told. The youngins need That's to cool. know about the hardships of the the old gold rush. Uh, yeah. And then uh, let's uh, and you guys should check it out because we've we've watched it too. It's it's super dark. The production value, the scope of it's crazy. As he was saying, it's all on location. They're actually walking on those mountains and mm-hmm. creating avalanches and crap. And a lot of great actors in the show. Uh, there's Tim Roth, Sam Shepard. <sighs> It's it's uh, yeah. really good. You guys should check it out. We blew up a mountain as well with twelve l- massive explosives. So <laughs> oh, I love it. I, I want to see it. you. You Michael Bay it a little bit. I like that. I want to so see let's, that. Let's, let's, uh, real quick before let's answer the uh, what uh, what prop did you take from the Klondike set? Ooh, did you take anything from Klondike? What did I take from Klondike? I don't think I took anything. Did you take memories there was, there and adventure? I took, I took memories and <laughs> adventure. Um, Did you grow as a person? I took I took hypothermia. And <laughs> and um, I wanted to take. They were never going to give me this. There was like we used some real gold, so it was like five thousand dollars worth of gold, just this big nugget, and I wanted to keep that. But yeah, couldn't you have just exchange to like the, like here? I'll give you this animal belt <laughs> <laughs> that I just carry on me. Well, if you want, you can take one of these props. They're for you. Um, just. Run with them. We'll look the other way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can have this bowl. This is wonderful. Yours. Thank uh, you. Not quite five thousand dollars. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> well, Richard, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for being here and being so freaking awesome and charming. Mm-hmm. We're gonna give you big hugs, this, whether you want it or not. Uh, my love burns deep. <laughs> And uh, for you guys at home, thank you so much for watching. And click like and subscribe on the video and the channel if you haven't done that already. And if you want to submit topics for other episodes of Table Talk, you can use the hashtag Table Talk on Twitter or on our subreddit on Reddit. I'm Steve Zaragoza. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Richard Martin. Yay! You have a Twitter? You can, you can give your Twitter. Oh, yeah, I hate your Twitter. Are you on Twitter? Tweet. I don't. Of course you don't. No, have Richard, a you gotta get on Twitter. Just I have an account, friends. but I don't tweet. Oh, man. It's probably better. Because other people, yeah. <laughs> well, you know I'm gonna freaking follow you, and then I'm gonna be like, hey, Richard. Maybe, one, maybe one day I will tweet. There you go. We're going to be waiting with bated breath for you <laughs> to tweet. All day. We're yeah. Gonna be like, he's going to tweet. He's going to tweet. Oh, say, he's that you hang out, say that you hung out with us now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> say that you liked us. You thought we were cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. You're the best, Richard.